Good evening. Welcome to the Public Works Parks Recreation and Environmental Environment Committee meeting of March 10th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. I am Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti, the chair. With me is Councilman Nick LeBron, uh, Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon, a non-voting member. And I believe um, Councilman Gale is not here presently, but uh, hopefully he will be joining us. Also in attendance is uh, uh, Anthony Maldonado from Parks and Rec, Charmaine Craig, our, uh, the executive assistant to council, oh, to me, uh, our attorney, our attorney uh, Mr. Del Visco. Um, I'm not sure who some of these other people are, Director Looney of Public Works, uh, Assistant Director Mailer from Public Works, and we have some guests who we will get to presently. Um, HVTV will be broadcasting tonight's City Council uh, Public Works, Parks, Recreation, and the Envi Environment Committee meeting. Uh, they will, I have to read this, uh, it will be on HPATV, Comcast, and Frontier Government Channels 96 and 6032. It will also be streamed via HPATV.org, the HPATV Facebook page, and HPATV's Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon TV apps. It will also be rebroadcast and made available on the HPA TV YouTube channel. So that's a mouthful. Um, so our first agenda item of the evening is a presentation and update regarding the planning and implementation of corrective procedures to improve the MyRec field reservation system. We're very excited to hear the update from Director Looney, Director of Public Works, and then I believe some input from Superintendent of Parks, Mark Dowd, and then Troy Stewart, Assistant Director of the Department of Families, Children, Youth, and Recreation, and then um, Mr. Maldonado, uh, Anthony Maldonado, Head Lifeguard at the Department of Families, Chuth, Children's Youth, and Recreation. So uh, um, Director Looney, if you would like to go first, that would be thank great. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, and thank you to uh, uh, Councilman LeBron as well for having us here tonight um, to uh, give an update on the uh, MyRec field reservation system and the work we've been doing in terms of improving operations uh, and uh, user usability for, um, for our um, recreation community. Uh, back in um, late August of 2020, uh, we have put together a operational review and improvement plan. And uh, as part of that for MyREC, we had established a timeline uh, and a schedule of when we wanted to get certain tasks done um, as part of this plan. And the items we were looking to cover as part of this uh, was you know, dedicating a committed DPW point person um, for, for the MyREC system to provide additional technology support staff, uh, to do a software parameters review of the MyREC system, make sure we were um, using uh, the, the version of MyREC that we have to the, to the best of, uh, of, of its ability and using as many of the functions uh, as we could. Um, and then um, getting into uh, this year, 2021, uh, we were uh, planning our seasonal kickoff meetings and then individual uh, tier uh, schedule sharing meetings where, for example, folks who are in uh, representing groups in tier one could get together and meet and discuss their field needs and try to um, you know, alleviate any conflicts um, as part of the scheduling process. We were also looking to create a, uh, a full MyREC contact list and an email listserv so that folks could uh, communicate directly with one another. Um, different uh, organizations and groups would, would have an, uh, you know, a portal to, to access uh, uh, their fellow recreation uh, community members and um, you know, could work out details of sharing fields and things, and things like that. Uh, and we had also talked about doing an, an end of year uh, survey at the end of 2020. Um, we, we appointed uh, you know, Mark Dowd, the superintendent of parks as, um, as our DPW point person uh, back in August. He unfortunately uh, had a prior commitment and wasn't, uh, was unable to, um, to meet, uh, meet here with us tonight. 
but he does send his regards. With me is uh, Jessica Mercier, who is our uh, GIS um, uh, project uh, uh, project leader at DPW. She has been um, the sort of backbone of the additional technology uh, support uh, for Mark and uh, and myself and our administrative staff. Um, and uh, she's been doing that back uh, since back in August when uh, we put this plan together. So we going through September and um, uh, October of uh, of the fall of this past fall, we um, you know, we did complete the contact list uh, creation and the creation of the lister. Um, uh, uh, Jessica also completed a software parameters review um, that we had talked about and um, and finished that up this fall. Uh, we also uh, created and posted uh, standard operating procedures and, and user manuals from IREC. Uh, again, Jessica was instrumental in putting those together and I'll let her talk about those in, in a few minutes. We, uh, we did have our seasonal kickoff meeting on January 27th. Um, it was, uh, interesting decision that we had to make because with with COVID uh, still the pandemic still being ongoing, um, it wasn't clear when um, the recreation fields would again be open for uh, business as usual. But I wanted to have us roll out the season the same way we would in a quote unquote normal year, uh, just so that when it got to be when the time came to where we got permission to open the fields and and get folks back out uh, uh, playing with the leagues, um, that there wouldn't be sort of a mad rush to everyone trying to get into my rec and, and schedule a reserve field. So we, we proceeded as if everything was going was going to go normally. Um, and of course, recently the governor has uh, uh, announced that um, you know this month we're he, he's giving us the green light. Uh, for recreation activities, and so we're in discussions now internally within the city as to exactly how we're going to roll that out, and those uh, those details are being worked out um, uh, as we speak. The only uh, the only piece that we did not end up doing out of this operational plan uh, or improvement plan was the end of year survey. Um, given that most of the year uh, from a recreation field and facility use standpoint was wiped out because of the pandemic. Um, didn't really see that there was uh, uh, um, much value in having the survey for, for 2020, uh, but this is something I think we want to do in future years, uh, possibly after this um, first spring season. So I was thinking maybe in June we would do a survey just to see how um, the uh, user community from MyREC uh, felt that the, the the spring operations had gone. Um, so again, we we uh, we had our kickoff meeting on January 27th. At that time, uh, Jessica did a, a presentation on uh, uh, the software parameters review and uh, shared that with with the folks who were who were on that uh, on that virtual meeting. Um, so we we got pretty good uh, coverage uh, with our rec community with that. And, uh, and then uh, Jessica and Mark Dowd took the lead on um, running the, uh, the, uh, uh, the individual tier schedule sharing meetings and rolling out the, um, the opening of the software on a weekly basis, um, first tier one, then tier two, and then tier three uh, throughout, uh, uh, throughout February and into, uh, into just this past week for tier three uh, a week ago. So um, uh, I think we've done a good job of hitting all of our target dates and trying to accomplish the task we set out to accomplish. Um, as, as the season has sort of unfolded, uh, there's been some, uh, you know, we've received feedback from members of uh, the recreation community from PRAC, um, from other users uh, of MyREC, and we've made some, some tweaks to how the software uh, works and how you reserve fields. Um, and submit things like uh, documents such as insurance forms and uh, and rosters. Uh, so we continue to, again, like I said, tweak the system as we go along based upon feedback that we're getting uh, from the community. Um, so that's 
kind of a, a Reader's Digest version of, uh, of where we stand and how we've been doing in terms of implementing uh, this improvement plan. Um, and, uh, you know, Jessica and I can answer any questions from the DPW side. Uh, I know that there's also, um, we've been working uh, with the folks at REC uh, and having better, better connectivity between our two departments um, with uh, with Troy and with uh, with Mr. Maldonado, um, particularly on the uh, the web the website itself and the um, the functionality of, of the website. Um, so again, as I said, that's a kind of a summary of, of where we are. Uh, Jessica and I are are happy to answer any any questions or, or explain anything uh, more fully if uh, if folks have uh, have other questions. Well, th thank you, Director Looney, and, and thank you, Jessica. Nice nice to meet you. Uh, maybe I'll meet you in person someday. Um, uh, do my colleagues, uh, Councilman LeBron, and I want to welcome Councilman Gale, Councilman Surgeon. Do, do you have any questions, thoughts for uh, Director Looney with his update? And thank you very much, Mike. Sure. Councilman LeBron. Yes, so uh, director, thank you uh, for coming on. Um, for your seasonal kickoff meetings, how many uh, community partners attended the seasonal kickoff meeting? Uh, Jessica, do you remember what our attendance was for that? That was the spring kickoff meeting, right? That wasn't the, sched that wasn't the uh, schedule sharing meetings? Yeah, the seasonal kickoff meeting, yeah. Yeah, the one on January 27th. I yeah. wanna say there was 25 people. Okay. Around right. there. Yeah, about 25 representatives. Yeah. And then um, with the sched, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Councilman LeBron. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. My apologies. Um, for the um, for the schedule sharing meeting in January, how did that work? Being that most of the organizations wouldn't have had schedules um, at that time. Or did they have schedules? Maybe I'm assuming. Um, so number one, did they have schedules? And number two, how did that go if they didn't have schedules? Well, um, through you, Madam Chair, um, I believe some of the groups generally knew when they would be likely to use fields and which fields they were uh, targeting for use. Uh, Jessica, I, I, I believe you sat in on those. Um, I wonder if you could you fill in some of the details here. Yeah, so for... Um, the tier one, there weren't too many attendees, as you were saying, you know, there, they didn't know how many kids were going to be signed up or people were going to be signed up. So schedules weren't solidified. Um, like Nick was saying, um, so not too much came from it, but we, did start to get to know, I mean, and myself included, I got to know familiar faces a little bit better. I started corresponding with people more and um, we had some, we actually did have a uh, conflict meeting about a couple fields and were able to clear stuff up. So even though the spring schedule meetings maybe weren't as successful as we would have liked because of the lack of schedule, it did, it did open up for conversations about other things. Councilman LeBron. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. Um, so in the, um, so these conflicts, I think the biggest thing around uh, my rec was, well, let me back up. I think the, bless, the blessing in Hartford is that you have multiple folks who um, provide uh, services for youth and adults and all kinds of programs in Hartford. Um, but the difficulty is the same thing in terms of scheduling. So sometimes it could be headaches. So with these scheduling conflicts, number one, um, has there been um, any, what what um, I've heard of bullying in terms of fields? So for example, um, you know, someone going in and reserving the field for the entire spring session every single day and not allowing, number one, has that happened or have you seen any of that? And then number two, in terms of scheduling, um, has there been any um, or any thoughts in terms of maybe doing another check-in meeting, a schedule meeting, being that the governor just opened up and, you know, that way there could be some 
shared scheduling. So for example, I may have predicted in January that you know I would have needed uh, a certain field Monday through Friday, but then the schedule came out and I actually only needed Thursday, Friday. So if you could uh, both questions, um, whoever can answer. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, yes, Councilman, I believe we did have one instance where someone booked a field for an extended uh, number of dates and um, I believe we, we rectified that situation with someone else who, who also wanted to use the field. Um, there, there hasn't been any, I haven't seen any instances of, of anybody quote unquote bullying or, or, or being aggressive about, about a particular field that hasn't, uh, I haven't had anything like that come to my attention, uh, which is good. And I agree with your suggestion that now that people can start to solidify rosters and solidify schedules, that a check-in meeting is, is a logical thing to do uh, in the coming weeks as we get uh, as we get ever closer um, to uh, the reopening. Councilman. Just one more, last one. Um, so uh, I, let me back up before I ask a question and, and director, thank you for putting together this comprehensive plan, checking in on all that. You make it really easy and digestible kind of a flow and um, very planful, if that's a word, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure Councilman Gale will let me know if it's not. Um, the, um, the last question is, in regards to um, the pools this summer, you know, there's every efforts that we're going to be opening pools this summer. Now our suburban towns, um, have utilized um, reservation systems, something similar to MyRec here. It has there any uh, thought process around with the understanding that we probably still gonna be, need to maintain social distancing, you know, maximize who can use the pool, any thought process around using MyRec in terms of pool reservations? Can I? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, I, I believe that's probably a uh, rec the recreation folks, uh, generally, the pools are in their are in their uh, okay in their wheelhouse, so no. it's probably best for. Um, so, so let's do this, it. Assistant Director Stewart. Hold on a minute. Do we have any other uh, questions and or comments, um, Councilman Gale, Councilman Surgeon, for Director Looney? Yes, Councilman Surgeon. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the MyRec program. Uh, that was a good idea regarding uh, the use of the recreation for the fields that are being actually monopolized by, you know, one group. Is there any preference being given to Hartford residents as the reservations are made? Uh, for you, Madam Chair, uh, yes, um, uh, there are councilwomen. Um, with our tier one, our tier one folks, um, that's, that's where we have a lot of Hartford residents. I think uh, Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's you need 80% of your roster to be Hartford residents in order to fall into tier one. And so when we open the, when we quote unquote open the software, the tier one uh, groups get a whole week just for themselves to get into the system and reserve the dates they want. And then folks who are in tier two who don't ha either don't have as many residents or are just um, you know um, don't meet that tier one threshold then they they get to come in and start making their reservations and then the tier three folks who are often um, um, you know out of town folks or, or or other groups other groups that don't fall within our you know our our children's leagues uh, here in the city they come in last and get to take whatever fields and dates are available at that point. So if you're in tier one, you get a basically a, a week's head start on tier two and two weeks head start on tier three. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Looney. And, and again, through you, Madam Chair, uh, how is the, when there, should there be a conflict of someone actually uh, monopolizing the dates and time? How are you guys rectifying that? Um, give me an example of how you have done so. Do you meet with the groups? That's number one. And then number two, do you verify the rosters of tier one uh, groups? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, so for the for councilwoman, for the instances where we have conflicts, um, we try to get the two groups to come together 
and um, the the idea is to have them have a discussion and see what sort of arrangements they can work out, if they can alternate days, if they can shift their schedules around. Uh, failing that, if um, we have the information of what other fields might be available. So if, if um, you know, let's say there's uh, uh, this may happen in certain instances on our um, artificial turf fields because those tend to be very popular. And if one field is, is taken by a group and another group has a conflict with that time, we may look to see if one of our other artificial turf fields is available. And if so, can you know the two groups um, you know alternate using the fields um, and work, work out some arrangement like that? So it, it's really kind of a you know a small group conversation of how we can get to a, get to a place where uh, both groups are are accommodated to the best of our ability um, to do so. Um, and uh, to your second question, uh, could you just uh, repeat that for me again? Sorry. That's okay. We can move on. I, I think I've have a good idea. Um, the response will be: um, Is there anywhere in this my my rec um, uh, uh, software program where you can list any issues or concerns on the field? Uh, for uh, first of all. To list the concerns and then also you know when the issues or concerns are uh rectified it can be um seen on the calendar uh for you madam chair i i don't believe my rec has that capability jessica you can jump in and correct me if i'm wrong um i think the way we would probably get it reported to us is either through uh 311 or uh, Mark or Jessica or myself or Patrell would receive a, a phone call or an email from the user group, um, you know, saying, hey, when we showed up at the field, there was all this litter from a group that had been there before us. Um, you know, that's happened on occasion. Um, where we're, ju we're just, con we're contacted directly. And um, Jessica and Mark are marked out are also um, uh, making themselves available during weekend hours. Um, uh, as well, because we had had instances where, um, you know, a, a, a game had been rained out and a, a group wanted to try to get the game in the following day. Let's say it got rained out on Saturday, they wanted to try on Sunday. But of course, with, with us working generally Monday through Friday, there wouldn't be anyone there to uh, authorize the use of that field. Uh, but Jessica and Mark are available to do that this year um, if we need to make a quick adjustment or a, a, a reschedule a field for, for a group. Um, so I think we're trying to keep the lines of communication open uh, just directly with us as the, you know person to person um, about issues like that that come up. So I'm getting to you, Madam Chair, is there any penalty for uh, any group that's leaving the field not as they found it? Uh, that goes a long way in maintaining um, the field. And number two, keeping everything cleaned. Um, so do you use there any penalty? What do you guys do to groups that has been maybe excessively or maybe once in a while, you know, doesn't leave the field how they are found? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, I mean, the first time, first instance would be, you know, a call to the group and a warning um, about, about, you know, whatever issue um, they may have caused. Um, if it's a repeat, um, you know, repeated offenses, we, we certainly reserve the right to uh, not allow them to, to utilize that field anymore. Uh, we have that ability to do that. Right. Well, I want to thank you, um, Mr. Looney, because I've kind of played around with the my the my rec on software, and it was really simply and easy for old person like myself to actually, you know, make a reservation. So uh, it looks really well. And so I need to uh, compliment you and your staff uh, for upgrading and doing this. It's uh, really nice to actually see um, that the city, you know, uh, can provide those services to the residents. So we all can take a look at it and see who's using the field at what time. So again, thank you. And thank you to your staff for a job well done. You, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Gale, Thank you. do you have uh, any questions for Director Looney before we go on to Assistant Director Troy about 
uh, pools. I believe that was, okay, thank you. I believe that was Councilman LeBron's question. Do you remember what it was, Troy? Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I do. Um, okay. The question was basically asking, um, have we used my way to do reservations? Right, 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 right. Yep. Um, yes, we have. We tried it out. Um, we had partial administrative rights um, back in um, uh, September. We have full administration rights just only four weeks ago, thanks to um, uh, our um, DPW director, Mr. Looney. Uh, the thing that we have done in the past was when we were under the COVID, we had our pool, our um, Parker pool was open and we had time slots where individuals could do um, lap swims. Uh, also, they could do um, uh, have um, little uh, families can um, congregate into the pool as well, but they had time slots that they can go into it so that the pool, they oh, what they did was go on my rec and then they had a registration where they can click on to see what time that they want to go in the pool. And that's the time that they came in. And that's why we let them in and out. So we did have a procedure. Also, if you take a look on my rec, you will see in the front page that we do have policies and procedures of what we have done since um, this pandemic has been going on of utilizing any of our buildings that's in the recreation side, um, all our community centers and everything else like that. So we do have policies and procedures that were up there since September. We have to modify them, which we have been doing um, ever since the governor is changing how we're reopening our um, city and state. So we are in that process. As you can see, um, we have made uh, tremendous strides in the last four weeks with our um, MyREC, especially the front page of MyREC, uh, trying to uh, try to figure out how we can leverage how we do different things with our fonts and stuff like that because we didn't have a proper training on it. So we're training ourselves on how to do these things. And I have to thank very much um, the people at my rec for um, assisting us every time we get into a glitch. And also I have to really give a lot of credit to our um, person who we have as a lead person that is uh, Anthony Maldonado. If he wants to step in and say a few things, I'll let him do it because he was the one who made it happen. Please, please do, Anthony. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you guys for having me uh, and inviting me. Um, it's definitely been uh, a rough year. Um, and those of you who have visited the MyRec page, um, I've seen changes over time. Every few months, we're trying to come up with something different. Uh, uh, we just uh, had uh, uh, the approval to uh, mess with some of the colors um, to kind of change the facade of the page and try and mess around with some of the fonts. So uh, some of the stuff has been well received. Some of the stuff has not been so well received. Um, but I think we finally landed on something that actually works. Um, it's be, uh, it's a bit user friendly. Um, I think to, to our advantage, we get to use the administrative side and actually go on the user side and, you know, obviously test those things out before we kind of put them out to the public and, uh, um, before they, you know, uh, before we get all those complaints and kind of get all those uh, those uh, hicks uh, out of the system, um, but um, it's been um, it's been great um, with having um, the opportunity to put information out there, um, try different ways to kind of engage folks, trying to um, come up with a plan to kind of uh, funnel folks into the system and expose them to our services as well as um, um, the reservation side of uh, DPW and some of the folks who are, um, are just trying to get their services up and get programs up um, and don't have uh, access or don't even know about this type of a system where they can uh, reserve fields for themselves, um, you know, up against, you know, whatever conglomerates or whatever other programs or community-based organizations that are already uh, using. So um, it's given us the opportunity to kind of combine the DPW services, the recreation services, and kind of bring them all into one. And hopefully um, uh, as we ease those restrictions, um, we'll be able to kind of, you know, be able to provide a better service for, for the constituents, so. Thank you. I, you know, I want to congratulate everyone. Certainly, we always can 
continue to improve, take recommendations, look at what's working well, look at what's not working. But I think if I can remind people of a few months ago, we were certainly not even in this position. So I'm, you know, really encouraged to see such a positive can do, you know, we, we're just not going to leave it how it was. And I, I think that's a collective thank you to all the people who are who are here. Donna, I think I saw your hand up at one point. Yes, um, thank you. Um, we did PRAC, uh, Brian asked me to speak um, for PRAC. He wasn't able to come. There's a, another meeting that conflicts um, a golf um, task force. So uh, we had sent an email with some very specific um, suggestions uh, about the MyRec page. And um, for the um, DPW side with the fields, um, what I've noticed is that although um, I can maneuver around that page pretty easily because I've been on it since the very beginning, so I know where things are. Um, I, I think that by, we, we gave very specific, I'll, I'll say, suggestions. So some of the tabs um, could be renamed so they're more um, user-friendly. So for instance, um, uh, registration tab, if it was called rec registration, because otherwise someone might think they register for a field there. Um, so, you know, a couple of little, I call it massages, so that it would make it much more um, user friendly for people who don't typically um, go to that page. Um, but, the, uh, you know, I, I, I hear you, um, Anthony, I know it probably sounded like a lot of um, criticism, um, but we're just really happy that you guys can make changes, um, that you can improve it, um, you know, other than having it be what they call the vanilla version because that's what pretty much was there for um, a couple of years. So we, we just, you know, tomorrow night we're gonna be meeting um, and I guess discussing that a little bit further. Um, but uh, I, I think that um, one thing that we were very happy about, so I do wanna mention that, um, the community, the community tab for community partners was something that um, you know, Troy and his group has heard us harp on um, for a long time. And that is up and running. And we sent a list of um, lots of community partners, which, you know, at some point when you get a chance, you know, to upload them, that would be terrific. Um, we have both, um, you know, youth and adult, um, I'll say things to add to it. But I just wanted to clarify something. Um, Tier one is youth, 80% um, Hartford. Tier two is 80% um, Hartford adults. Tier through three is we call it rest of world. Um, someone who doesn't qualify for any kind of discount or preference. And those two, first two tiers um, go in order by youth first. They get a whole week. And of course, they can continue to um, log in and you know um, ask for fields after that point. At any point going forward, as long as the field isn't already um, you know booked, and even if it is booked, many times people will negotiate and say, "Gee, do you really need that field at that time?" Or you know, "Can we have it?" You know, we've got a lot of kids, whatever. So it's it's really um, I'll just say it's it's uh, that part. I, I think. You know, the part that we had the most difficulty was is we didn't have enough eyes on MyRec. And now we've got some additional eyes on MyRec. We've got um, Jessica, you know, is, is really looking at it and she's getting to know people, as she said. Before that, it was just Brenda. Brenda was the only one and she just couldn't do it. And I think that having more people involved in it will make it a much better product for everybody. Well, good. So... Thank you, everyone, again, you know, and thank you, uh, Director Looney, for really, you know, stepping up when we presented that to you. So next on the agenda, um, uh, any updates from uh, Assistant Director Stewart, please. Are you there? Can you hear me? Troy? Yes, I'm here. Oh, oh do you have update? You're next on the agenda. Oh, at this time, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it, uh, just, uh, you know, it, it, any, uh, you know, I know you talked recently, but next on the agenda is you. Uh, I know Kim is at the other golf meeting that they're having right now, so. So, so definitely, um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, definitely, um, we are in the forefront of doing our planning and working closely with the Pratt Recreation um, Committee. 
Uh, also, we are um, having our suggestions being um, made to um, the mayor and Thea before we move forward on what we're going to be doing next uh, with the with the cooperation with um, uh, the public works director, Mr. Looney, so that we're not conflicting with anything that is happening. So we are on the on the on the way of on the right path of making sure that this summer, this spring and summer is moving forward. But right now, I can't say it until we are getting out. If we get, once we get the okay. <clears throat> any any um, questions from my colleagues for um, either? Uh, um, Mr. Maldonado or, or uh, Assistant Director Stewart. Councilman LeBron. So uh, thank you for that in terms of the uh, uh, plan and through you, Madam Chair. Um, the, in terms of uh, using uh, 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 Mrs. Suarez's um, term, the massaging, um, definitely this, I mean, uh, the MIREC again, thank you. I mean, this is, this is this is um, this is great. The only thing I would just suggest um, two things is that um, for um, the pools, if they can be a pool tab, maybe like one of, instead of the soccer ball, maybe like a pool one. Um, I think that'll make it really user friendly for families. And then also for you know we ha we have in our community grandparents raising grandkids, folks. We know the virtual divide. We know that there's. Mm -hmm internet issues, access, you know, not saying we have to solve the problem tonight, but just, you know, some kind of consideration for folks, if they can, you know, call in and reserve pool space. The pool is the, by, by far, we all know what the pool means to our community. So, but like by utilizing the phone and maybe somebody going in, I don't know if we have the bandwidth for that. I don't know. I just think I, I don't want anyone being left out because they, number A, they don't have access to the internet, and number two, they're not uh, technologically proficient. So just those considerations in terms of the pool. Well, we are addressing the, uh, the, the situation already. We do have a phone line that individuals can call. And they are, everybody know the phone line, they, they call us all the time. So we have that opportunity for anyone because we all know everybody doesn't have internet. And we always been doing that all the time. So they know our line is 7574880. So they know how to call us. Also, we have another line, which we're going to be pointing up to where you can just um, tap on it, either if you want to learn about any center, if you want to learn about any of the pools or whatever, and they'll give you all the information that you need. So we do have the phone line system, which we um, just recently got. So we're moving in that, I mean, on the on the um, coded side, but we always had a phone line where anybody who wanted to do reservations can do it over the phone with us. Fantastic. Thank that's, you. That's awesome. Thank you. Any other council people? Okay. Well, I, I want to really. Sorry. I'm yes, sorry. Councilwoman. I thought, I thought Councilwoman Surgeon had her hand up. Oh, that's did all. she have her hand up? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilwoman. <laughs> Um, Madam Chair, I know it's hard to keep track of everyone. No, I just wanted to uh, uh, thank um, Donna Swore for educating me on the different tier one, tier two, and tier three. I didn't know this. That was the one word for the youth and two. So thank you so very much, Donna, for that um, <laughs> clarification. And uh, Councilman uh I asked my question regarding the telephone calling because that was a major issue. I thought of um, not being able to uh, just not only you know using the program, which I thought was great. But through you, Madam Chair, just one question for yeah, uh, Director Looney. And um, when I when I was looking through the my rec, does the cricket fields also as reservations or is it just basketball, soccer? I really wondered about that for the cricket, um, for the sports of cricket also. Um, I, through you, Madam Chair, I believe they are in the system. Jessica, can you confirm that for me? Uh, Councilman Surgeon, they are. Oh, yeah. I, okay, because I couldn't figure out. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're I mean, right baked in the middle, but they're under the Keeney, so. Okay, they're under yeah. the key. all right. I, that's yeah. what I was looking for that and I couldn't see, but it's nice to know that they're also being uh, reservation. And so, so can I just ask one last question, Madam Chair? So okay. basically if I wanted was to see what activities are going on throughout the parks um, for the city on any given day, 
do I just go to the calendar, you know, and I can see, you know, a monthly calendar of what's going on? At this point, yes. Okay, because uh, so that's like every day. So I can see it in a month, you know, like, you know, the, the a month, and then I can just choose a date and see what's going on. Yes. Because I, I'm looking at it and I couldn't figure out. I have to scroll through all the different days to actually get down to, I was just trying to see if I can see it like a month at a time. Because as we open up our city, one of the things I believe the mayor is trying to do is trying to have some synergy um, with activities that are going on in the city. And, you know, if I can just scroll on it and take a look and see what all the different activities that's going on, that would certainly, you know. The, my my Rick um, covers uh, all of the athletic. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, did you want to speak? Thank you. Okay. Oh, so you have to scroll brother. all the way down and it will say all the fields. Oh, it goes all the fields. Okay. Oh, okay. But, but I want to add to that. You made a really good point. It only covers what's happening in via the rec department and um, the fields. It does not tell you if an event has been scheduled by um, the development services um, special events task force. And we have asked them if they would add that but so far, they have not been amenable to um, presenting that information in my, my rec. But we thank thought you, we thank you for that information, Donna. So you. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So, um, Councilwoman Serge, just saying, I think um, that question in the calendar on the tab, um, there's a tab where you could see the whole month, and um, I think, um, and there's different features, but. Um, I can, you know, we can work offline and I can, you know. Yeah, that'd be great. I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, think and, and that's what, I think that's what I, I was playing with. But I, I, and let's, matter, be clear, let's be clear, as, as Councilman Surgeon pointed out, uh, with Mayor Bronin speaking about, um, you know, an emphasis, as we continue, we've had a year like no other. And right. certainly people bring good points. I've heard what Donna said. Others, this is our opportunity now to continue to improve on what we've started. We'll hear things here tonight. We'll have an update again next month, the month after that. So things will not stay as they are and they will continue to improve. And the big thing is to know where things are and how they will. And I think that's really important for us to be able to do that and point to it. And what were you gonna say, Councilman? Oh, uh, so just, I, I wanna just put a pin in it. I know that we have to move on, but um, on the listing, we have two schools listed, which is Quirk in any Fisher. However, we know that multiple schools have multiple fields. And along the um, same vein as through you, Madam Chair, as you were saying, you know, um, we're probably going to open up really largely and there's probably going to be a lot of things done. And so I don't know who this goes to. It maybe it's Mark Dowd or Director Looney is the suggestion or the opportunities for the schools um, outside of the times that they're using the fields, of course, they would get first preference, but like on the weekends and those type of things, if they're not using the fields, I'm thinking about like Weaver's a beautiful field, you know, like the this relationship. This is an ongoing conversation yeah. you and I have had, and yeah. we, we would like to, uh, Director Mooney, figure out how to elevate that. I mean, this right. conversation was something from the last Correct. many months, but how do we elevate that? And that's not... Right for tonight, but could okay. we have a conversation where we elevate that to the next level? Thank uh, you. Through you, Madam Chair, yes, uh, we can certainly uh, engage in that conversation. Okay, thank you. Um, if there aren't any other comments uh, for uh, Director Looney, Jessica, nice to meet you, Ms. Maldonado, Assistant Director Stewart, we're going to move on to the next agenda item. That's okay with everybody? Okay. Very important agenda item. It's the reappointment of Donna Suarez, as a representative of the Friends of Cold Park, and the appointment of Miriam Roan as the representative of the Friends of Keeney to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission. And we have both in our um, packets uh, uh, write-ups for both people, but why don't we start with uh, Donna, no offense, let's start with the new person, Miriam. Uh, 
um, you know, thank you for, first of all, willing to serve for our city. And obviously everyone here has a real affinity to parks and recreation. So um, I've read your um, information and it's just wonderful. So I don't know if you'd want to say a little something to everyone here. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to serve. Um, I really do so in honor of my mom who grew up in the North End and Keeney Park afforded her a sort of empowerment that we talk about now is so important for young women uh, in terms of sports and uh, horsemanship. She was a great tennis player and all that really um, fed into her becoming a, a independent, strong woman. And I'm so happy to be able to be part of the parks and rec system that hopefully will offer that to other young children coming along. It's so important. Absolutely. Well, well, again, we thank you for giving of your time. I don't know if any of my colleagues have a question for uh, Ms. Roan. Um, if, if not, we, we have a Don, oh, we do, Councilman Gale. I, I don't have a question, uh, Madam Chair, but I do want to uh, pick up on what you said um, in terms of thanking Ms. Rome for stepping forward and uh, uh, wanting to serve the city in this capacity. Uh, we're, we're always uh, uh, very grateful that we have so many talented people in Hartford who you know, we'll give up their time freely uh, to promote the interests of everybody else in Hartford and know that we at council are uh, are here for you. If there's things that you find in, in while you're serving where we at council can be helpful, please come back. I'm sure I speak for everybody. Please come back. No, no, just call John. Don't yep. call any other. No, go. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, and Thank now, you. yep, so we would like to, we have a reappointment of Donna Soir, uh, uh, Friends of Colt, to uh, the Parks Recreation Committee. So uh, Donna, um, I don't know if you wanna give a little update why you wanna be reappointed. Well, I can't tell you how thrilled I am um, that so many improvements have taken place in Colt Park. Uh, it's been seven long years of planning, uh, pushing, pulling, and now it's coming to fruition. And with that being said, um, Colt Park um, is, the friends are in a transition. We're going to become a foundation so that we can do some fundraising. Um, our previous um, uh, group uh, was very much about volunteerism. And so we're going to try to become a little bit more um, codified and a little bit more uh, supportive in another way. But um, Councilman LeBron got to hear the long version the other day about um, what is going on in Colt Park. So um, just to give you the skinny, um, this spring, um, there's going to be many projects that are completed that are in phase one, phase two. So the uh, new um, sheltered um, shade structure near the pool will be built, a walkway, um, an east entrance installed, um, and some minor, um, I'll say little things tweaked on the softball fields. So it's, it, we still have construction in the park. And with that being said, I can't really plan um, a celebration until I'm certain that the um, construction is done. So at this point in time, I'm planning a reopening in October um, because I'm hoping uh, that with COVID, um, more people will be able to come. There'll be less restrictions. And we're planning on doing it um, close to Elizabeth Colt's um, birthday, which is October 6th. And since she is the, the one who gave us um, the park, we thought that that was fitting. A small she'd approve. Place, she'd yeah. approve. All right. So we're going to do um, some very small projects we've got earmarked. Um, we want to help um, clean up the handball courts with uh, Hartford Decides Project. We're installing a free little library. Um, I'm hoping for a um, for, for funding for a tree plan uh, from MDC. And so those things are ongoing. But the really big thing is trying to get us, um, you know, uh, a 301 uh, status as um, 
the foundation. So thank you. We are very busy and we look forward to 2021. Yay. Yay. Let's hope it's better. Um, so we have, uh, again, two wonderful uh, appointment and a reappointment. So I will need a uh, Councilman LeBron. Yes, I want to make a motion to oh. appoint uh, uh, Miss Miriam Roan and Mrs. Uh, Donna Suar to the PRAC for this upcoming year. Is there a second on that? I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. Thank you very much. That brings us to agenda item three, other business. Is there any other business? Being none, that brings us to agenda item four, which is a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Do you, Madam Chair, make a motion to adjourn? And is there a second on that? Yay. Oh, I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I know. You know. John wants to continue, so, but well, really. <laughs> More reports, but okay, all right, I'll say. Okay, second. you could share something on the screen, maybe. Um, listen, I really am very, very encouraged and impressed. I know what a dedicated group, I know how dedicated PRAC is. I really am excited about my rec. You know, pools will reopen, parks will be open, children will be back out. This is what our city and parks are for. We'll continue to communicate. When things go wrong, let's talk to each other. When things are right, let's praise each other. But that's the important part. So thank you. Have a good night. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Councilwoman. Bye. 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 And thoughts of suicide. If you are a 